Hello, sports fans. It's me, Sportsman Z, Bob Zolke. And today I'm here with your XFL update. Yes. What an exciting week we had this week. I, however, was only two and two. And on the year, that makes me 14 and 6, which means I got 70% so far of all the games correct, which is not bad. Again, compared to the NFL, where I was just under 60% correct for those games, I'm doing a lot better in the XFL. And I was happy to get one of those games wrong, <coughs> because if you recall, I had predicted that the uh, defenders would lose to St. Louis, but they didn't. That did not happen. They beat St. Louis. And not only did they beat St. Louis, but they showed something that we haven't seen in the last couple of weeks, and that was defense. So um, it, that's encouraging to see. Because these are the XFL standings right now. And as you can see, D.C. is in first place with the same record as St. Louis, but because we beat St. Louis, we are technically the first place team. So, but, you know, they're both three and two. Um, and then you got the uh, Guardians are also three and two, but I think that's kind of a deceptive three and two. I don't think they're really that good, but we'll see. I mean, they replaced that... Um, they replaced that salty quarterback that they had. Um, and so since then, maybe their fortunes have uh, improved. So we'll see. There was a guy that played for the Raiders in the NFL. Um, but yeah, that dude. I don't know if he's ever going to get that job back. And then you got... <clears throat> um, and then you got the Vipers down there at 1-4. and four. And this is the halfway point of the season, too. So, you know, it's, uh, time is running out for like the one and four teams, like, uh, the Vipers and, uh, you can see the, uh, Dragons down there. In fact, they're, those teams probably don't have a chance. They probably don't have a chance to make, to be the playoff, one of the playoff teams. So then, you know, that's the, uh, XFL East. And then in the West, you got the Roughnecks on top at five and oh. Roughnecks are tough. And then you got the Renegades and the Wildcats, both at two and three, and as I said, the Dragons at one and four. So that's what your XFL standings look like right now. And uh, so let's get into next week's games. Um, next week, on Saturday, March 14th, we, uh, I've got Houston over New York. New York is the home team. And that's going to be the 2 p.m. game on ABC. Um, and I've got Houston, like I said, in that game. And then this is another one of those where on Saturday I'm picking the visiting teams to win. And then on Sunday I'm picking the home teams. Uh, so the second game on Saturday is St. Louis um, at Tampa Bay. And I'm taking St. Louis. And that's 5 p.m. on FS2. That game can be seen. And then uh, March 15th, Sunday, March 15th, the first game is D.C. at home playing Dallas, and I'm taking D.C. Um, and that's 4 p.m. on FS1. And then uh, on uh, the second game is Seattle at home over L.A. Um, and that's 7 p.m. on ESPN2. Now, those two teams, I mean, really, it's a toss-up because they're neither one of them is really that good, so I went with Seattle because they're at home. Um, and D.C. should beat Dallas, especially since they seem to love playing at home. But they got to learn to be road warriors, I think. So they better, they better figure that out. Um... And then I'm, I'm real comfortable with Houston over New York and St. Louis over Tampa Bay. I should be 2-0 on Saturday. 
So that's where we are. That's the standings. That's who I'm going to pick next week. That's where I am on the year, 14 and 6. So, um, you know, as far as the rest, as far as the league, I think the, the quality of play has steadily improved. Um, the, um, the, you know, some of the teams have replaced their quarterbacks like New York and, um, I think the Vipers run like a dual quarterback system, but you know, the quality of play has gotten better. Um, and these guys are showing that they, uh, some of them are showing that they could very easily end up sometime in the NFL. Um, you know, at the very worst on taxi squads. Um, and I read something too, where like the XFL players only get like twenty five thousand um, dollars. You know, like that's their salary for playing every year for playing in the XFL. But if you were on the taxi squad of an NFL team, you would get something like um, I don't even remember what it was, but it was a lot more. It was something like 150,000 or something if you're on a, on a team's uh, practice squad in the NFL. So um, so a lot of these guys, at the very least, could be on, a, on an NFL team's taxi squad. And some of them could even be playing for teams. I mean, I'm a Bears fan. You don't think I wouldn't mind that Houston quarterback being on the Bears? I'd love it. So, uh, so yeah, I think it's, uh, I think it's a good thing. I think this is a good league. I think it could possibly survive. Um, because again, it's right in that time slot right after the Super Bowl and kind of will only just slightly run into the baseball season where there isn't really that much else going on except like hockey and basketball. Um, and I'm not even sure about basketball, but I know hockey is definitely going on. I'm not really a basketball fan, so I don't know much about it. But but it's in a perfect time, time spot. Um, and, um, and also I heard that the uh, a week or two ago the um, was the uh, NFL Combine. And uh, the XFL games even... Uh, were watched by more people than even the Combine. Although, I never really understood watching the Combine. I also never really understood watching the draft. I don't do that. Yeah. I mean, that's... If I really want something that's... You know, I mean, watching the paint dry on my house would probably be a little less boring than watching the draft. But, you know, that's just me. Some people love it. Uh, I used to work with it. This is, I'm now, I'm going off on the tangents. But, but. You like that? You like that? Anyway, there was a guy that I used to work with that um, was a Vikings fan. And he would tell his family, don't bother me when I'm watching the draft. I mean, this dude would, like, lock himself in his room. Like, lock himself in, like, the, whatever, the family room or something and watch the draft. No. Not for me. Um, and part of it is just because I don't even know some of the players that they draft. I don't know if they're good, you know? I'm always, like, asking my brother, is this, the Bears drafted this guy, is he good? Yeah, I don't know. So, anyway... That's just a little side tangent, um, and I know probably don't want to hear those from me, so I don't want to get too rambling. But yeah, quality of plays improving. The league, I think, is solid. Uh, hopefully it lasts, um, but we'll see. No other league has really ever lasted uh, except arena football, and even arena football, I think, finally died after like 20 seasons so hopefully this lasts um but i think they've got their 
I think they've got everything nailed pretty much this time. They did a lot better than they, the first iteration of the, of the XFL. So hopefully that can continue. And uh, just want to remind everybody, subscribe and ring the bell and pass it on to anyone else that you think might be interested. Every week I'm doing an XFL update. Uh, every week I'm doing an NFL game of the Bears from the 2008 season with Stratomatic football. Um, when the baseball season starts, I'll be giving uh, uh, very, uh, very, quite often I will be doing updates on the White Sox and how they're doing. So, um, you know, a lot of interesting stuff on this channel and... Uh, you know, tell your friends about it at work, um, email people, send the, uh, you can send the, uh, uh, link to the video, I think, to anybody. So, yeah, let's drum up interest in the, uh, channel, and, but for right now, that's me, I'm done with my rambling, Sportsman Z, Bob Zolke, signing off.